the signal, it'll stay on the 30 degree sine angle and on those, those over there without a problem. It'll slide right off of these. And uh, so you wrap it this way. After you get it wrapped around this corner, bend the tape over the corner, wrap it a few times around there, pull it in really tight, and then start this way and you can pull the top together and clamp them like that. So you can put any shape together with that tape because it'll conform to any, to any shape. Sample a piece of plywood, just three, three pieces of veneer glue together. It's got two maples and a, with a vermilion in there. We make them up in square sheets and small sheets and they go in just about everything. <coughs> Give me that. Here it is, I got it. <laughs> Had a little sawdust in it. <coughs> Here's a pedestal that's been partially turned. It's got a dovetail in it. It's got some red veneer. There's that tenon on top to go up in the bottom of that bowl. Here's the top to that bowl I talked about earlier. That's that same pie shaped thing that's in the bottom. Use it for a lid too. You can produce these with one setup, like I mentioned earlier. One setup and you can get these bowls. That's a, that, that one's been around a long time. I hadn't made any of those in a long time because I got into the compound after that and I like the compound angles a lot better. See if there's anything else in here that uh, I haven't showed you. I guess not. That's pretty much it. We pretty much covered it. But the point I was trying to make today was that this segment would work the setup if you take your time, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, make your stop. Take the time to adjust it. You can get the setup. You get everything locked down. You start cutting. If you hit a big knot and something jumps or something gets caught and goes pling, you can, you, it can mess your setup up. So anything we're cutting, no matter what it is, we'll cut enough segments for three and we stop and tape that one together. Every third one gets taped together. So you cut two, tape one, cut two, tape one. If you're working with these exotic woods and you don't do that and you get a, a bling and something moves just a tiny bit, you can create a, a lot of really expensive firewood in a hurry. Because you can't hold them and go back and cut them. I've tried it. But this, and, and, and the, and the small form, trying to put a small block in there and, and we cut it, so it, it just won't work. So check it. If you're cutting, check it. Now, for you furniture guys, these here, if you make up some of these out of that one eighth thick material, or matter of fact, make them up out of three quarter inch material. Say you want to make up a whole bunch of these and you put them together. Where's that stack of them? Is it left over there somewhere? There's a stack of them somewhere. It's on top of them. Yeah, there it is. We'll use that for an illustration. Yeah. I'll just use four of them. Or you take these and you make them up. The sides come out really smooth. You just touch them up with some sandpaper. Just hands touch them up with some sandpaper. Very carefully glue these up together. Set a string of them that long. Come back and trim them. Don't try to trim them to this point right here because some of them's going to be out of place and they won't trim just perfect up and down this way. They're never going to trim perfect right to that point. Drop down a quarter of an inch and cut this off across here and across here. <coughs> Take it to your bandsaw and resaw it. You get four strips out of it. You make one heck of an edge for the table, around the tabletop, like some of those illustrations you saw earlier. It, 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 it makes all kinds of, of your uses for, for decoration for furniture. I mean, I've got some of these patterns on the top of the tables. I've got some in the top of the chest of drawers. Uh, it's a chest drawer that's low enough you can still see the top. Uh, I've used, uh, used the diamond pattern in the legs and laid it into the legs of some of those tables. There's a lot of, lot of different ways you can use, uh, use these, these patterns in these shapes in woodworking projects like tables and so forth, benches, whatever. And it really adds a decorative effect and it's not that hard. You get it set up to cut these diamonds, you can cut them all day once you've got it set up. The diamonds are really easy. And gluing them up's not not tough. And just resaw them, get to use some eighth inch material, and lay you up a tabletop. And it really makes makes for some nice furniture decoration. 
So any questions? When you glue those pieces together, how long do you let them sit before you start turning or, or cutting? Uh, minimum of two hours. And I have glued some pieces up, solid pieces of mahogany up with the, that tight bond glue and a couple of clamps or a vise and turned it in an hour and it would stay together. Uh, it's very pressure sensitive. That's why I use the type, regular type bond instead of the type bond to it. It tacks quicker. <coughs> you take two pieces of wood that have got a nice flat surface and you put glue them, you rub them together, you notice there'll be a point there where all of a sudden it'll tack. It'll, it'll catch. It's called a tack point. It'll grab. And uh, you put pressure on that point, on it at that point, and man, it's, it's there to stay. You can turn it in an hour, but I don't like, I always wait two hours. And a lot of times I'll do it the last thing before I leave the shop and go upstairs. Uh, I'll glue it and let it sit overnight, you know, why not? And uh, by the time you come back the next morning, it's really set really well. But if you're going to take some of these components and put them in front of your face and spend them about 2,000 RPMs, you want the glue to be pretty doggone solid. <laughs> I don't lose a lot of these. The only time I lose them is if, if I forget, like I talked about earlier, if I forget to glue a, a joint in one of those Christmas tree ornaments, well, when you start turning it, it'll hold together. But as soon as you get, you know, start turning and touch it with the tool, pew, that joint will come apart and it's gone. It'll split off. And uh, so the, the, I really don't lose a lot of them. Uh, very seldom I have a glue figure. I mean, the, the glues we've got today are stronger than the, than the wood. If you know, if you glue two boards together edge to edge, put some pressure on them, let them set for a couple of come back with a hammer and try to beat that off, the wood, the wood will break off before the glue joint will separate. We've got some really good glues. That type bond's great stuff. Do you have any trouble with oily woods? Yeah, sometimes I'll wipe them down with uh, some mineral spirits or something, or back or thinner, mm -hmm. and uh, glue them up right quick. Some oily woods. I don't use a lot of oily, real oily woods, but you know, they're like the olive and uh, uh, some rose woods and things. But if you're going to do them, you, I, I lay them down, I got them separate out, ready for the glue joint, I'll just take a rag and wipe the joints, and of course that stuff evaporates in just a minute. Then yeah. I'll put the glue in there and, and, and glue it up. Did it, you mention how you flatten the ring after you glue it up? I've got a, I've got a, you can, you can flatten them by putting them in, a, in the uh, jumbo jaws and turning them flat. I've got a little 13 by 32 inch belt sander that I run most of these rings through to get them flat. It's a belt sander. It's not a drum, it's a, actually a belt. Got it from uh, well, Woodworker Supply in New Mexico years ago. And it's great. For, it's got a feed belt, and uh, just just feed this stuff through. And it, any of the, all this stuff is either either turned or, or fed through that uh, fed through that little sander. What do you suppose the tolerance is on on flat? Is it like a thousandth of an inch or something like that? Uh, you ain't, you're not going to notice it till it gets four or five thousandths. You, know, you might notice it. It can. It don't have to be perfect. Yeah, the, the tolerances on this are are. Uh, not as tight as you think, except for getting the joints to fit. After you get the joint to fit, the other tolerances for stacking and flattening and all are, are minimal. It's not a it's not a big deal. But I make a, I make a lot of things out of these product egg boxes, urns. Uh, some of these I've made into urns. You know, bring them on up and put a little neck on them, make them look like a Grecian urn or something. Uh, the Christmas tree ornaments, uh, the potpourri bowls, uh, the confetti lamps. Man, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a whole array of things you can make with, with this polychromatic process that uh, and everything looks, looks good. Uh, like I say, I'm a woodworker first. I enjoy the challenge of cutting these pieces, making them fit, and then turning. I'm a turner second. I enjoy the turning, now don't get me wrong, but uh, that's one of the reasons I think that Delta appreciates my turning ability. When I turn in their booth, one reason they like for me to do it is because I don't just represent the lathe, I represent the whole shop. Because you've got to have a good table saw, a good rail arm saw, a joiner. You've got to you've got to have a perfect board before you start this. And uh, you don't you don't put that through a planer, right? <coughs> no, that, these don't go through a planer. No, none of these blocks go through a planer either. They're not. All they've done is you can take them to a drum sander, surface sand them a little bit if you want to, mm -hmm. or you have a disc sander or a belt sander. Oh, there's one thing I I've mentioned in then right there about a perfect board. <laughs> so just for an example, we were uh, we were cutting these. This this is a, this top piece up here it goes up on top of this bowl. It brings it into the top. That's what these are. We call them we call them the top rings. They're cutting wedges instead of uh, blocks. Blocks are when you stand them up. Blocks are these. Wedges are these. 
and a friend of mine, he wanted some to cut some too. So we threw mine up on the on the saw, and I, I well, I already had the saw set up and had to cut some of mine. And I again every every second one, I'd tape it, make sure everything was cool. So he brought his material in, and uh, we saw two. And then we saw, I was sawing the third one, and he took the second one and was taping it together, and it came out like that. This is it. Hmm. And, uh, I said, dang, man, mine all came out okay. I went back and checked a couple of mine, taped them together, looked at them. I said, I don't, what's going on? Got to measure his boards, and his, his table saw fence had been off about a sixteenth of an inch. And when he pushed those boards through there, they were a sixteenth inch wider at one end than they were the other. You've got to have a board with parallel edges, parallel surfaces, and parallel edges edges to make this work. This will not work with an imperfect board. And I'm glad I thought to bring this up here because that's very important. You, you've got to have a, have, have a perfect board almost to make it work. Because you, you cut and you flip, and you cut and you flip, and it magnifies it. It gets worse and worse as you go if the board's not perfect. The, the fit gets worse and worse as you go. So that's a good example of what happens. You don't have a really, really good board. Okay, any questions? Well, I hope all of you furniture people and the wood turning people got, uh, got some, some information from this and that uh, you'll use and play with. And any of you have any, ever have any questions? Uh, I'm always, I give out advice that if you call and ask me a question, if I don't know the answer, I may make it up. But, but, uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'm always glad to answer anybody, you know, something you want to know about any of this stuff. Give me a call. Thank you. Awesome.